This is Red Bear. Finally, there's a way for Studio One and MOXF players to use the MIDI section of Studio One when you're tracking your music. For Windows users, there's a website called motivator.com and it has a sheet that tells you step by step on what to do. We're gonna use that sheet for Apple users as well. The problem is there's a couple of extra steps that you have to do. However, for this video, I am going to do the entire setup process as if you took the MOXF out the box for the first time and you downloaded and installed Studio One for the first time. I figured that out. This will be the only video so far on YouTube that tells you step by step how to use Studio One with MOXF with MIDI separated tracks when you're recording your music. First thing you have to do is go to the Yamaha website, pick up the Steinberg and the standalone for Mac. Download it and install it in your system. From there, we're going to open up Studio One. From there, we're going to configure audio device and we're going to select the Yamaha MOXF6 MOXF8. What that is, that is actually the Steinberg plugin that you downloaded. That is how Studio One reads your board. Select that and we're moving on to configure external devices. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new keyboard. Once you add the device, go to new keyboard, type in Yamaha in the manufacturer line. Type in MOXF keys in the device line. From there, you'll come down. For the MIDI channels, make sure it's all turned blue. You want every MIDI channel. You're going to receive from port one of the MOXF6, MOXF8. You can leave the send to blank. And if you want to use the board as your primary board, just go ahead and click default instrument input and hit OK. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to add a new instrument. Same thing. Add device. Select new instrument. Yamaha for your manufacturer. But this time for the device name, you're going to label it MOXF Synth. And what that does is that differentiates in Studio One whether you want to use keys or synth. Also, you're going to receive from and send to port one. Now you're going to get an error message on the receive from section. Clear it out. Hit OK. After that, you want to once again select all for the MIDI channels. And you also, if you plan on using the arpeggio, you're going to have to send the MIDI clock section and click that box. After that, hit OK. Your external device section should look like this. After that is completed, start a new song from there you're going to select as many tracks as you need plus one. The plus one will be the actual 
brain of your project. You're going to add instrument track. And then from there, you're going to select the instrument that you need, which is the second thing that you downloaded earlier, which is the VST of the MOXF8. Select it, drag it into your first track. And when you do that, your VST interface shows up. This is part one of how to get your tracks individually done. You're going to select a voice and change it as you see fit. For this example, I've used six tracks, piano, bass, keys, guitar, horns, and drums. I've already done that in this example. I've also went ahead and selected that on my primary track list. Track two will be the piano, track three will be the bass, track four will be the guitar, and so on and so forth. In order for my tracks to play out individually how I need it, I need to first select MOXF synth from this drop down menu at the top. And then I'll match the MIDI channel with the parameter in the interface. So the piano is channel one, bass is channel two, keys is channel three, guitar is channel four, horns is channel five, drums is channel six. That part is done. So going back to track one, I need to hit this button where you see it says offline and in order for it to work, it's got to be online. Notice nothing has happened. So I have to go to the USB detail, turn it on. Port four is how this works. Change both MIDI in and MIDI out to port four and then the synchronization will begin. Once it's done, you're online. So now you should be able to separate the different voices in your tracks. But wait a minute. You're noticing that the piano sound is on every track. Go back to the board. There is a button that says quick setup. You will hold it. From there, you have two options. You can either hit A or you can hit E. This option was always put in place to better set up the board internally for you to use a VST. If you use Cubase, it's the same features. It allows you to separate without having two sounds coming out of the same track. Once you hit that button, you are now ready. And that is how you use MOXF with Studio One for the MIDI purposes of recording your tracks for any project you need done. Like me, I don't like Cubase. I like Studio One. I've been using Studio One and I like to continue to use Studio One. This is how you do it for Apple users. Thank you so much. Comments are always open.